Hello, I'm James Helder and welcome to another special episode of Not For The News Transfer Edition. Quite fortunate enough to be joined by my esteemed guest from the world of football and boxing, none other than BEM Curtis Woodhouse. Woodshack, how are you, mate? You okay? All good, brother. Like that, like that. Also joined by the Enigma, the controversial one, none other than Leon Knight. How are you, Leon? Good to have you with us, brother. What's happening, pal? You all right? I'm all good. I'm all good. So we're going to get straight into it, lads. I want to look at Cristiano Ronaldo potentially uh, leaving Manchester United. Exit all but confirmed. The writing looks on the wall. What's your thoughts on it initially, Ronaldo leaving Old Trafford? I'm going to come to, to Woodhouse initially on this. Yeah, I think we touched on it the, the other day, didn't we? I, I think Cristiano Ronaldo has been massively let down by Manchester United. You know, probably when he signed, he probably promised him so much, but you look at the players that are around him, you know, he, he's surrounded by dog shit, isn't he? You know, he's been used to playing with the top, top players and he goes to Manchester United and he's got Fred and McTominay firing him, you know, balls around his neck, asking him <laughs> to control it. He must be like, what is, go what is going on here? <laughs> so, yeah, listen, he deserves a big stage, world-class player, one of the greatest to ever do it, the greatest goal scorer of all time. He deserves his move, deserves to get out of there. Where Where's he going to go, though? That's a big question. Who can afford him? Who really, really wants him? He's getting on a bit now, isn't he? But, man, you don't deserve him. Mm. Do you think it could be very unsettling for the rest of the team if Cristiano Ronaldo does leave and if it being so public as well with the exit and the reasons for that? I, I think um, from the reports, it seems like People probably want him to leave the lads. It seems like he's he's been quite demanding on them. You know, he'll have, his standards will be absolutely astronomical and, and nothing that anyone in that squad had, had ever been around before because he's an absolute winner. So they're probably waiting for him to go so they can slide off back into obscurity and averageness, which he will allow under his watch. Mm. Yeah, Defo, I, I'm, 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 I'm with you on that as well, Curtis. They don't like him, he, they, you know... He's always got something to say, and if it ain't if it ain't we ain't winning, if they ain't winning, they ain't scoring. He ain't scoring. He's gonna have something to say, which is right. Like do you know, what I mean, like he said, he's 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 level of flipping expectations is unbelievable. So, end of the day, them Man United players around him, they can't flip and deliver. So you know, he's always gonna have something to say, and that. In that change room, you can tell they don't like it. You can tell they don't like him. Do you know what I mean? You, they, you don't even have to be in that change room to see that. Do you think it puts? Yeah, I agree. Do you think it puts the new manager on the back foot a little bit? The fact he's having to no. deal with this drama straight away with Ronaldo. No, no, because he, he, you know he, it's already done deal. He's, he wants the goal. You get him out. You steady the ship again, and then and 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 you go again. It's not really. He came in. What did he came in? How long has he been there for? Seven, eight months? The big problem Man United have got is they're losing their best player. They're losing their leading goal yeah. scorer. That's yeah. not the big issue. How Where are they, they going to replace him? Them goals? Exactly. Where do them goals come from in that squad? They have Where ain't Marcus them. Rashford? I seen the other day that Rashford was going to play down the middle. I'm like, man, you will do well to stay up. Yeah, they, they, they're going to need to, they're going to need to buy somebody. Of high two, caliber. Two, though. They probably need two, you know. They, they, they've lost the they losing Ronaldo. They've lost Cavani. They need a focal point. Man United need a number nine, you know, that can hold the ball up, bring the play, other players into play. They've got the pace and the movement. Without that focal point, Man United are really going to struggle. You know, they, they, should be look, they should be looking at someone like Dominic Calvert-Lewin. I mean, who, who is in there? When he goes, Cavani's gone. Who's there to like say, "Yeah, all right, well, I'm going to play up front"? I don't understand. Like, I, like I don't, I don't know, but I, I don't think there is anyone. To be honest, there's no one. They've got is loads there? of wide forwards, aren't they? They haven't got like an actual centre forward. Ronaldo and Cavani were the two, but the the rest of them are wide forwards. They're not. The rest of them are not going to get ten goals. They've got the other man that we. Yeah, dare, they've got the other man that we dare not mention. So I guess that's a big kick in the foot, not having him available for selection as well. Who? Well, Greenwood, isn't it? He would have been playing a lot of time, I'm guessing. He would have got games. Yeah, he's got bigger problems at the moment, mate. They've got, they've got, they've, like Curtis said, they've got to spend the money and bring someone in, haven't they? 
Sorry. Well, who though? Who, who realistically is on the market they can get? I can, I can only think of a, a focal point. You know, I, I don't know world football, but they need a number nine. And, and Dominic Calvert Lewin for me is the probably the only one I see out there that can do that job. That's probably playing in the Premier League now and would be available. Yeah, yeah. but is is United players? Is United fans going to be happy with that? Is that the answer to their problems? I think. I think I think Man United would, would be overlooking him. I'm not saying you're, it's the wrong option, but I think they think they're too big. Well, big of a club. They're going to be looking at. They're going to be looking at like Lewandowski or somebody like who's on the market. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. He's, he's not that big, sexy name, is he, Dominic Calvert Lewin? He's not, you know, been around in Europe and got all the trophies. But I definitely think they need. But if it's not Dominic Calvert Lewin, they need someone that's got that same type of profile as a player you know six foot plus powerful good runner can hold the ball up score goals but listen you look back throughout the years when at um man united when they signed strikers rude van nisselroy rooney they've always gone and got the best one on the market the yeah. only one they missed out on really was alan shearer but yeah. you look at the strikers that they've got through the door it's always been you know a few years ago harland was going man united you know all them all them center forwards the top ones, there's no, they weren't going anywhere else apart from Manchester United if they were coming to England. And Man United have slipped that much now. They're probably not even in the top three or four clubs that um, that the no. players are looking to go to. Go, goes without saying they haven't got the pulling power that they once have. They're looking and linked. The players that they're linked with aren't the calibre of players that you would expect. No chance. Like, they're, they're players that are the work in development, like Broby, for instance, great young talent. From the Dutch league, but again, it's unproven in the Premier League. Who do they bring in? Where do they where do they replace them goals from Ronaldo? Who comes in? It's a t- it's a tough question for Man United. I think they're going to be struggling this year. You know, yeah, if they don't get like a proven goal scorer through the door, I think well, they need more than a proven goal scorer. But you know, if they don't get that, that's a, that's that's like should be top of their list. If they don't get that, they're going to be absolutely scrambling this season. When you yeah, here's at- one fear. What what about Tammy Abraham's? Good striker. I've done really well at Roma under Mourinho. The thing yeah, is- but 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 Italian football's crap. Yeah, true. He's been over here for so long, mate, and you know he ain't he ain't set the set the place on light. Do you know what I mean? I don't I don't know why everybody's like he's got this England cap, he's got this, he's got you like, know, like it's Italian football, bro. He's flipping a load of dog shit. Nice. He's never really had a run though, has he, for Chelsea? He never really got like fifteen games in a row, and he's had a run in this. But I I agree that I reckon I'd get ten. In that Italian league, all day long, because he weren't good enough, Curtis, to be over yeah, here true. and play. Trust me, mate. I'm, I'm telling you, mate. Like he wasn't good enough to be over here and play. Like he, he, he went back over there slow. It's like the Kaku comes over yeah. here, can't fucking um, hack it. Goes back to yeah. Italy, guaranteed he gets 25, 30 goals next season. Yeah, listen. The, the facts are, Knight is right. If you're good enough, you get a run. <laughs> you know, it's as simple. it's as simple as that. Yeah. yeah, if you score, if you're scoring, it, 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 the manager can't take you out. Yeah, and that's fair. Look at all the managers that Chelsea had, and none of them gave him a run. So they can't all be wrong. Do you know what I don't understand with Manchester United? They're clearly needing a centre half, a CDM, and a striker. They're being linked with none of the above. They're being linked with Frankie De Jong from Barcelona who's not really a CDM. He, Dragging it out as well, aren't they? It, it seems like it's the worst sort of transfer business and, and I, unable to conclude in a long time. Curtis, you, know, you, really need. You, 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 you've obviously in and around like a couple of years older than me or whatever. You've seen United's heights and whatever. I've never seen them in this situation. No, me neither. You know, back in the day, Man United have, have got, this is what they'd have done back in the day. That have gone and got Declan Rice, that have gone, that have gone and got Haaland. Yeah. Um, and who who else you need? Centre half. That have gone and got Rudiger or whoever, whoever's available. Yeah, yeah who's went around Madrid, yeah. Yeah, that have gone and got the best in class. That's what they've always done. But the, the thing is with Man United, and this Man United fans hate this. Now every club has loads of money. Back in yeah. the day, Manchester United just used to be able to push everyone around and financially bully teams. Give us your best player. We'll pay 10, 10 million pounds more than what he's worth. We yeah. want it. They haven't got that spending power. And since Man United have not had the spending power, because they, they, they could double everybody else's, they haven't won anything. 
They've not won a thing since other teams have been financially competitive. Mm. They've not been able to do what they've done historically, which is going by all the best players. And that and the, one, and that. the one manager that, that did suck a couple of cups out of them, they flipping offloaded him, which is Mourinho, unbelievably. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And he worked under flipping, he worked miracles under what he was flipping given. He had a load of dog shit there as well. So, like Curtis is saying, the slip, mate. They ain't got, they ain't, they ain't got the pulling power like they used to, and it's just, it, you can just, it's, it's, it's there to see, mate. You know, you look at Man United now. How far, how long are they away from winning the title again? Oh. It, 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 it seems a long time, doesn't oh. it? You'd have never said like when Sir Alex Ferguson left, Man United are not going to win the title for twenty years. But that's creeping up. That twenty. What are they now? Eight, nine? Is it? It's going up. No more. It's going up. Far. It's more than eight. I was thinking about this quite recently. A lot of the players that are young now probably haven't got that same nostalgia and fear factor and respect of Manchester United. Yeah. Where... It's getting it's getting like it's nearly a decade. It's I'm sure it's a decade yeah. already. It, it won't be far off. It's like Liverpool, isn't it? You know, Liverpool were dominating and didn't win it for was it 26 years? Mm. Man, you are going are going the same way. And like you said, they can't now financially bully everybody because everybody's yeah. got money now. Mm. <laughs> everybody. Lads, I want to come off this subject a little bit. I want to talk firstly about Jack Wilshere retirement, former Arsenal star, England international, as we've seen, announced his retirement today on Twitter. Quite an emotional statement as well. I don't know if I, if I read it right, but it seemed like it seemed like he thanked everyone by Arsene Wenger as well, which was quite interesting. Um, did he not? Did he not thank Wenger? I, from what I could see, I didn't see Wenger's name in there. Oh, wow, I thought I thought them two were tight. Well, that's quite interesting. Um, firstly, let's discuss Jack Wilshere's career. How would you put it into words and summarise Jack Wilshere's career? Case, you're the, you're the Arsenal man. You probably see more of him than me, but probably I don't know how long how long you've been watching Jack Wilshere play. Ten years, probably seen him have five good games. Um, Got the label of a wonder kid and the, the next this, the next that, you know, very, very early. And honestly, hand on my heart, I don't want to sound like I'm I'm being a I'm I'm being out of order because he's retired and you know he's retired through injury as well, which is really, really disappointing and upsetting for him. But I mean, just a steady player, wasn't he? If we're gonna be honest. You know, you put him alongside the midfielders that Arsenal have had, Petit, oh. Vieira. He ain't getting anywhere near them. Fabregas. Yeah, he was. He was. He was a good player when Arsenal were rubbish, you know. But if, if, when Arsenal were good, you wouldn't have heard of Jack Wilshere. They'd have probably sold him to a Birmingham or something like that. He, 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 they, it. Oh, again, overhyped, mate. Overhyped, mate. Over like everything. Everything was just over the top with him. Like, do you know what I mean? And like Curtis is saying. If he had ten good games in them ten in them ten years that I the space that I seen him at in Arsenal, what seven eight? How long was he there? Well, he was there for a while, wasn't he? I'd be very surprised if he had like ten like outstanding games that he ran the game and and stuff. Do you know what I mean? The game that always gets talked about is the Barcelona one, isn't it? When, yeah. when it, he, he had a great game against you know really really good Barcelona team. But I mean, how long can you dine out for that? I'll be no. honest, I, I've ripped the ass out of winning the British title, but that's wearing a bit thin now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Jack, to be fair, he's rolled the life out of that one good game against Barcelona. Nice. I think the, the media was over the top and saying he's the next this, he's the next that. Obviously a good player to have done what he's done, but I'd just say that, just a, a, a good, steady steady player. No more, no less. I mean, I mean, when you look at him and you look at Fabregas... There's not even a comparison. Do you know what I mean? And Fabregas kept doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. And do you know what I mean? It's just, there ain't no, I don't know where these people get this from. I don't know who's behind him and who's pushing him, who's pushing his name. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, like when, when, like you sit down, like, all right, come on, done what more than I ever done or whatever. But as, you know football and you play football and stuff. You just look at it and you go, fucking hell, are these people all right? Yeah. He didn't score goals, did he? He didn't really create many. It's kind of he like... Just looked, he just looked good on the ball. Yeah, I know what you mean. 
left footer, you know, looked like he yeah, was, he looked. He was yeah, he was doing bits, but if you actually broke much. down his game, didn't really do much, did he? No. If you, if you order Fabregas from Wish, you end up with Jack Wilshire, don't you? <laughs> <It's worked out. laughs> if, you look at, if you look at his performance against Barcelona, that great side, he was phenomenal yeah. that night. And if you look at his progress and where he was compared to other in other under twenty one players around his generation, he was at the top of the pile. So that makes leads me to question how much. How much blame should be attached? And who put him at the top of the pile? Yeah, I was going to say that. You can't, to, just, you can't just chuck things out like that, James. We come to that, who, who? How much blame do we attach to Arsenal's physios, Arsenal's training team for the outcome of Jack Wilshere's career? Why? Why would we do that? Do you not think? Do you not think he's been mismanaged? Do you not think there's been a case? How? Of how can players the, been mismanaged the, in the past? If you look at DRB. If you look at Eduardo, if you look at the but, players that have been forced to retire. Your body, your body's he's built. Years, thirty years of age. Yeah, but James, more years of James, there's only so much a doctor and physio can do for you. If your body can't recover, they can't magically get into your knee or your back or your hammy and say this, this needs to be better. Do you remember Carlos Vela? Yeah, we remember all of these, James. But what I'm trying to say is, yeah, you can't blame the doctors and the physios and stuff like that. That that that's a that, that don't that don't even make no sense. Don't you find it bizarre though the amount the high amount of players that have had misfortune? At that that's stage. just how it. That's just how it is. That's just how. That's how it is, James. Like in football, it's just it's just unfortunate that it's been underneath Arsenal. Some people are not built for it, are they? You know, some people's bodies. This is what I'm trying to different. say, Curtis. This is what I'm he trying had, to say. He had ankles that were made out of poppadoms. Yeah. You know, every, every time he moved, he broke his ankle. He, he, he was like, who's that guy? Was it Elijah? What's he called off? Um, Unbreakable. <laughs> <laughs> was it Elijah? Eli, 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 yeah, something like that. Well, that's what it reminds me of. Sounds like, like I'm being, <laughs> being really harsh to Jack Wilshire. Like Knight, he said, you know. I'm a midfielder. I'm absolutely nowhere near Jack Wilshere's level. But nobody was calling me the next coming of... Um, you know, you look at... When people talk about greats, you look about, say, Lampard, Scholes, Gerrard. He's not even anywhere near any of them. You know, nowhere near. You know, he, he's nowhere near, like, the top 100 midfielders um, no, that, no Arsenal have, that Arsenal have had. Ne no ne chance. Never mind on a, on a... Well, maybe 100. I don't know. 90 see more of them than me, but... You look at the midfielders that Arsenal have had over the years, they're all better than Jack Wilshire. Yeah. I don't I don't ever think Jack Wilshire was in, ever any better than just a decent prospect that never really fulfilled his well, I won't say potential. I just say he was never as good as what people said he was. Say, yeah. And I think his career panned out to the kind of the level that he was. He was a decent Premier League player. No more, no less. He didn't have no pace. He weren't really, you know, he didn't assist really that much. He didn't score no, goals. That... He glided though, didn't he, Knight? He glided. Yeah, but that don't, that don't, this is, this is the thing. This is the he thing that's wrong with football. That's what, that's what Knight said. He just looked like he was doing This is what I'm trying to say. This is the, this is the thing that's wrong with football today as well. Like, if he was playing in today's game, they'd be like, Jack Bowser! Because he just looks like he's doing a lot. Like, his movement and, like Curtis said, left footers always look better than right footers. Do you know what I mean? He's got that little stand up and that little pass and jit and come back and but in in <laughs> in the end, yeah. in the end, as that as that guy go when he does this on the fucking internet, what's his name? <laughs> fucking black geezer, what fucking goes like that? Like, what's he doing? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, mate. I, 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 listen, he, scored, I... he scored he scored some good goals. I like you know the link up plays and he does. A famous one against Norwich or someone, someone like that, yeah, yeah. where it was about a hundred passes, and then he he pull it in in the end. But come on, man! If we're really, he ain't even as good as um, Aaron Ramsey. Nah, no, nowhere near. That's what I'm trying to say nowhere near. You know, near. You like, know what? I, I think Wilkes is one of them. If, if you were to create a five minute highlight reel of him, he'd he'd be unbelievable because he, he did the little late night. He said the little bits where you're like, yeah, that that was that was good, but ultimately. Didn't really go anywhere. I didn't really do anything. Just, just kind of looked good. His overall, his overall game. You know, he sound like we're hammering, hammering. I'm trying not to. 
<laughs> because obviously he's a good player, but when you're talking about the top top players, he you know don't forget it. He, he, and in the and bracket, then James, you James, you're trying to blame the flipping physios and the flipping doctors at Arsenal. I'm just asking the question, I. Right? I just like if the doctor, like if you broke your elbow right now <laughs> and you went to the flipping doctor and the doctor said, boy, we can do this for you and do that. But if your elbow saying, fuck this, we can't, we're not doing anything. We're just standing where we are. What can the doctor do? Oh, I hear that. I hear that. And you, you know what? Part, part of being a good player, top player, is about doing it week in, week out and having a robust body that can do it. And, and Jack couldn't, he, you know, he physically couldn't handle Thank it. Thank you. I get that. All right, let's look at Chelsea. We've seen. Good point. Hey, just want to clarify though. Good player has had a, a, aye, a, aye, a aye, great Jack. career. <laughs> aye, Jack, Jack, we're not. Congratulations on your retirement. Congratulations on your new job and under twenty-one. I mean, under eighteens at Arsenal. Don't know whether it's deserved or not, but you know, well done. Yeah. We're not criticizing you, bro. But we're just on here. We try and give you the, the like the realest. Yeah, I hear that. We're we're we're, we're just saying. You're not that level. Yeah. We res we respect you. You're just not that level. And yeah, that's you're cool. Not. You're not. All right, lads. Now, with the departure <laughs> of Chelsea, of two big defenders leaving, Rudiger and Christensen, that leaves a big gap in Chelsea's spine and defence. Rumoured that Nathan Aki is joining Chelsea. Um, coming to fill one hole. What do you think about that signing? Good, good move for Chelsea. Do you think it's a, a shrewd buy? Or do you think it's a little bit overpriced 45 million I'm led to believe for a transfer fee I think because of you look how Chelsea play with a back three Aki's left footed isn't he so we'll fit into that nicely give him that little bit of balance I'll be honest I've, I've seen very little of him um, he went to was it Bournemouth um, and basically went to Man City and didn't play any games so I haven't seen, really seen much of him but probably fits into the when you're looking for a left sided centre half there's not many around and if you're a left footed defender and a centre half you, you, you're you the premium really um, I don't know Rudiger wasn't um, left footed but he really did well on that left hand side and they're probably looking to um, to find someone to do a similar job so yeah he, he could do a good job he, I, I don't like to say I've not seen enough of him just he basically went to Man City and retired didn't he you yeah. know knew he wasn't going to play <laughs> just, just went there quadrupled his money I was like, yeah, that'll, that'll do me, lads. Cheers. Never kicked another the ball. <laughs> I respect it. Well, I, I am rate the hustle, bruv. That's why I say if I was ever in today's game, I would be one of them, man. hundred percent. Like you're, one you'd, million percent. You'd, you'd, you'd be happy to sort of play the role of Danny Drinkwater then, for instance. Yeah. Fully. Nighty, Nighty would be drinking Fully. water all day. Bro, Listen, I'll be on. I'll be on the sideline giving them the water on man, the pitch. I'm saying this night. You can just play me in the Carabao Cup, and I'm cool. Bro, <laughs> I'm telling you now. Yeah, no banter. I don't care if I like if City bought me, and I was just playing in the Carabao Cup and preseason games. I'm fucking happy with that. <laughs> do you know? Do you know when I die and come back in my next life? I want to be a sub goalkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> them, them guys are absolutely taking the piss. Hey, right, listen, mate. I need to be one. Of, and 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 you got you can forty odd. You can fucking still be playing, mate. Mate, then you retire. Then Scott you become Carson. coach. Scott Carson's coming to mind, isn't it? Or Scott Scott? Then you yeah, become that, coach. That, that's him. Yeah. That's great. Mate, madness. I need that. To be fair, Knight, I don't think me and you are big enough, though, for that. <laughs> I, I, got little, I, I got a little spring on me. I'm this Renee Geeta thing. I'm on this, I got a little... Got a little Shaka Hidlock look about you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've, seen, we've, also seen, we've also seen Kula Bali has turned down his six million offer of Napoli contract to renew. Rumours are that it's going to be hard to prize away do you think Chelsea should prior, prioritise him as a key target? I think he's the sort of player that they need to, to close the gap on Liverpool and Man City. The centre-back, Koulibaly. Yeah. He's another one I don't really see too much about him, to be honest. Big athletic centre-half, isn't he? But I don't know. I don't yeah. really know too uh, much what, about what, him. What, what, what are you playing against week in, week out? 
That's if I'm a manager, that's what I'm looking at when I'm buying a player as well. What are you playing against week in, week out? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, what are you up against? Like, is there a real test to say that you're that defender? Mm. Like, you know what, as well, there's no better era than now to be a center half. Oh. No better era. Honestly, you look at the center forwards that are coming through now. And first of all, they only play one of them. So, yeah. like, you, you're a centre half. You, you've got you and your partner normally to deal with one centre forward. There's no physical presence anymore. There's no better time to be a centre half. That's why none of them can defend. Yeah. They're, all, they're all great on the ball, but wow, yeah. none of them can defend. You know, I saw an interesting stat today. Virgil van Dijk is yet to lose a game at Anfield that he's played in. What do you think about that? Does that... Does that have a bearing on your argument of the calibre of defence or the calibre of player that they're facing? It says it all, doesn't it? Do you know what I mean? If he had flipping, if he had, if he was up against Ian Wright, Ruud van Nistelrooy, Rooney, mm. fucking he, he, he Era, Drogba, he, Robin, um, and Andy yeah. Cole, he, he was, and Cole. Cole, Dwight York. And Nelka, yeah. I know, you know what as well. A lot of the a lot of these players were mentioning played in a four four two. Yeah. So Van Dijk and whoever he plays alongside were playing up against two centre forwards, dragging him about, pulling them in behind. Whole different ball game. Like I said, there's no better time to be a centre centre half. They don't have to defend anymore. It's it, it, it's bonkers. And when they do, they're like a fish on a bike, they're all over the place. Can you imagine? Can you imagine Van Dyke, Van Dyke and um, who, play, who plays alongside him? Joe Gomez. Matic, isn't it? And Matt, uh, Matic. Matic and Gomez. Matic. Can you who's imagine? A, who's a big guy as well? The, is it Kunde? Yeah, Kun, Kun, Kunde. Yeah, yeah. No. Can you imagine Henri and, and Bergkamp playing against them two? <laughs> <laughs> now, lads, right? Are the we, murder scene. Are we looking <laughs> back at it like, you know, I love that era of football. Are we looking back at it with a little rose tinted glasses like our dads no. say to us when they go, Oh, never as good as Peter Beardsley, lad? Do you know what I mean? Are we looking no, are, but, we no, but, that, are we now in that no. frame of mind where no, you're a little no. bit different to the new talent? No, because it's evolved. It got better. You can't tell me it didn't get better. Maybe one and two players. Could still hold a little title and say, "Yeah, well, boy, he was that. He was still." I would admit it. Like for instance, John Barnes could still, like Curtis says, he could still hold a title and say, "Boy, he wasn't better than him." No, John Barnes is better than Janola. I could still say that about that pass. Well, oh, hold on. So let, let's put it this way then. So you you tell me a better centre forward playing now than Thierry Henry. You tell me a better number 10 playing now than Dennis Bergkamp in the Premier League. Mm. They, you can't. So we're, we're talking about the game evolving. That's fine if that's your opinion. Well, you, you tell me two players better than them two. I understand your argument. I do understand your argument. Hey, did you hear the way you answered that? <laughs> you went, you went, yeah, I understand your argument. <laughs> Bro, there is no, uh, there's no argument. It's just, that's just facts. 100%. I look at the centre forwards now playing in the Premier League and I, I think of Harry Kane instantly. I think Kane yeah. hang, hangs in any era. Um, I'm and I'm an about Arsenal fan. I'm, yeah, I'm thinking about others and I'm like, centre forwards now that could hang in any era. They ain't many. Obviously, you got Cristiano Ronaldo, any era. Who else is he? The one that just left, Aguero, he was one, but he's yeah, gone. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. But now, James, it's not a thing of having tints on and all of that. I'm just speaking like, like facts, bro. It's not. It's what your eyes are seeing. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's what your eyes are seeing. I'm with that. Imagine Ian Wright in this era now. <laughs> like, just, in coming short, they going long, and fucking defenders fucking. <laughs> you're having a laugh, mate. Even, no even Alan Shearer, you know, with that physical presence he had. Shearer was, and, and a peak Shearer as well was quick. Shearer oh. could run. You know, oh, he, he, a black he man rover get... Shearer. Yeah. Him and Sutton up top. Woo! Mate. Can you imagine them two in today's era? Joke. Sutton would be like, oh, fuck it. <laughs> 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 Flicking a 
yeah. Oh, yeah but that, that was a deadly duo, you know? So, yeah. yeah, that, yeah. Yes, yes, that season they terrorised, you remember? Oh, yeah. Absolutely terrorised. Who's the guy they had on the left wing as well? Uh, Shipley. Ripley. 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 Gillespie on the right, Ripley on the left. Jesus. Yeah, in midfield, they had Batty, Batty. and Tim Sherwood. Sherwood. They, that team was sick. David Batty. <laughs> David Batty's got to be one of the most underrated, underappreciated players of, of any generation. I genuinely I don't know why he doesn't get more praise. I played against Batty, you know, when he's at Newcastle. And honestly, I remember going home thinking, like, <laughs> I need to start looking for a new job. <laughs> yeah. this, this football ain't for me. Batty was like, you think of Batty, what do you think when you think David Batty? You think tackler, like yeah. a hard man. Mate, the guy passing was ridiculous. Mm. 10, 15 yard pass inside the foot, outside the foot. Just, mate, he was ridiculous. I couldn't believe how good he was. I was only young, granted, but it was a real eye opener of actually how to play centre midfield. Crazy. Great player. Imagine Batty around now in a oh. three man midfield, just sat deep. Ah, oh, he's going for 100. Like, hold on a minute. So, you're talking 140 million for Declan Rice. That means Batty's worth 250 million then. <laughs> because Declan Rice is not better than David Batty. No, no way. Not a hope in hell. I apologize no to Colin Palmer. I told him he'd be worth about 50 or 60 in the modern game. I want to apologize. I think he's going to be worth a lot more at this ratio. Listen, I don't. Carlton Palmer was an absolute in beast. Bracket now. In, 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 imagine Carlton, like I said, with a sitting midfield and, and him just running box to box, box in, getting in the box. He'd score goals and everything. Carlton was a good... Carlton was, I remember that midfield that Wednesday. I remember they had Carlton Palmer and John Sheridan in midfield. Yeah, yeah. Remember, mate, that, 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 was, that was a problem. Yeah. Very, <laughs> very Sheridan, big problem, bro. Hey, John Sheridan as well. What a player he was. I know, I know we're going off Tangier, but John Sheridan was a player. Absolute right. baller. Yeah, they they like like James to getting back to it. It's not about because we're from that era or whatever. Do you know what I mean? We I'm just speaking. I know there's some players that from the past era that you could still name and say, yo, he could fit. He could play in this flipping era or whatever. But bruv, I'm telling you now, the last era was a dream. If you was in that era to watch, yeah, it was a dream to watch because this era now, I'm not saying they're not good. They've got some fantastic players, mate. Unbelievable players, but it's nothing like the caliber are of. Are they? Are they? Are they being over over coached in the academy? Then why are we not getting these individual brilliant players? Why are we not getting? Has the the, the winning mentality been coached out of the players from young from not having competitive football? What are your thoughts on it? You know, I I, I think it's um I think it's a a generation thing. I think people are not built how they used to be built. Every generation's got a little bit softer. That's just how it is. Um, and, you, you know, I don't want to sound like being disrespectful to the modern day player because obviously they have worked their socks off to get where they are and big respect to them. But how many playing now are generational players that play in any era? I mean, if we're just thinking off the top of my head, I can think of, I can think of Harry Kane. I'd put Van Dyke in that bracket as well all day long. I think Van Dyke could hang um, with, in, in any era. But when you start looking at the top, top players, I'm thinking they wouldn't be top players back in the day. And I, I, I do think it's a generational thing. It's why, it's why the, the boxers these days coming through are nowhere near as good as the last generations because they're, think, just not, they're, they're just not as tough these days. Yeah. Like, like me and my old man was having a conversation the other night on the phone and we were just saying like the heavyweight division. Fucking hell of shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Like I don't care what anyone's saying. I grew up in the absolute peak heavyweight division. I don't care. Lennox, Holyfield, fucking Tyson, fucking Riddick, Riddick, Riddick Bowl, Riddick, Riddick Bowl. Bowl. Mate, that 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 nineties era was special. There were some great fighters in that era that that you don't even you know that didn't even really really shine. But you look at them now and you're like. Yeah. They would have been right in the mix. Yeah. Uh, I actually had a list the other day. Who was I chatting to? Um, and he sent me a list over of 90s heavyweights. And he had like 15 on there. And I'm looking, I was like, 
man, forgot all about him. Even Donovan Razor Rudder. Remember Rudder. him? Donovan <laughs> Razor Rudder. Bro. Remember him? Fucking. That fucking uppercut that he had, that limp arm, oh, mate. Yeah. Hey, mate, what about him as well? Ray Mercer. Remember Ray Mercer? Oh. Mate, Remember him? Imagine, imagine him around now, like Olympic gold medalist Ray Mercer was. Mate, he could fight like mad. You know, Tommy Morrison? Remember Tommy, Tommy Morrison? Tommy fucking Morrison, mate. There were some great fighters in that era, some great fighters. And I, I don't think that an era has been anywhere near as good as that since. That was the last great era for me. Even Listen, even Frank Bruno. Big Frank yeah. around now. Honourable mentions to Galotta. Honourable, honourable mentions to Butterbean. Uh, I'm trying to think. <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> not... fed, I'm going, going a bit of off tangent here, and I want to try to keep it on the footballs we can, but they just fed Butterbean people, didn't they? He's got yeah, they did. But to be fair to Butterbean, he knocked them out. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's matter, his highlight reel is ridiculous. Who would you rather get a punch off? Butterbean or Big Duncan Ferguson. You've got to take. You've got hands behind your back. You've got. To, you, you're getting one shot. Big Dunk all day long. Yeah, you can't. You can't have Butterbean hitting you, man. The, the man's like thirty stone. Yeah, but I'm. I'm getting Big Dunk all day long. Yeah, Big Big Dunk. No, no disrespect to Big Dunks. I wouldn't like one off him either. But yeah, yeah I'd rather take one off him than Butterbean. Do you remember what he done to the burglars? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, Big Dunk. I see. When, the, thought of, the thought of it's got rid of Nighty, do you know what I mean? The thought of Big Dunk. <laughs> got rid of him. Just mentioned his name. And he's he's off. off. Mentioned his name, he's done a runner. He's off. <laughs> anyway, that just about concludes this week's episode of Not For The New Special Transfer Edition. Um, yeah, really good to spend some time with the lads. Please download the app if you're watching this on YouTube and vice versa if you're on the app, Nighty. You're Sorry, right. lads. It's all right. Mention Big Dunk can you did a runner. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want that smoke. You didn't want that smoke from Big Dunk. It's pretty understandable, to be honest. We're going to have a look again next week at some uh, random topics as well. Football's hardest men. Teammates, when teammates attack as well. I like the idea of that. It's quite a good one. I, I, want, to, I want to do another comparison one as well. Yes, yes, we'll dig out a big player for for um, for Tuesday. We'll do a big player comparison: tinted glasses versus new designer shades, Gucci shades. I've got one for you now, right off the bat. I've got one for you now. We won't discuss it, but I've got one for you now: Trent Alexander, Gary Neville. That's a good one. Why is it a good one? That's shit. It's a good one. No, it is. It's it's Gary good. Neville all day long. Wow. Mate, I, I'm on the same page. Gary Neville. Neville. Like, listen to this, yeah? I know we ain't going to discuss it, but listen to this. I've got to listen now. You've drawn me in. <laughs> My, I'm a manager. I tell my team, there's the team sheet, there's the 11. I want my defenders to defend. <laughs> I want my midfielders to defend and create. And I want my forward players to score goals. Simple. Four, four, two. We bloody have it, son. That's not nice. tactics. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, I so, think Gary Neville is one of the most underrated players. Oh, really? The, the, yeah, definitely. Gary Gary Neville for me is a generational fullback. Wow. Gets in, gets in any team now. You, you're talking about the great right backs that we have now. Gary Neville's better than every one of them. Every, every last one of them. Would you take Gary Neville over the England yes. backs now? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Are you having e me on? Easy. I'm asking you. I've got my opinion. You haven't asked me my opinion. I'm just asking you your opinion. What's your opinion, James? Modern game, I'd probably go Trent. The game's changed a little bit. Right. This is why I'm trying. This is why nobody asks you. <laughs> <laughs> Get me. Because, <laughs> Rob. You might be our age group. Yeah. Four four two ninety. I'll probably. Yeah, but me. it's not. It's not even four four two. I don't even care about. Backs. If we're playing wing backs, I'll probably go Trent because he's going to give me more. You know what? If we're playing wing backs, you play Gary Neville on the right of that back three as well. Play centre half for Man United. Yeah. Gary Neville, honestly, because people don't like him as a person, they, like they totally. Oh, 
they totally overlook how good Gary Neville was. Mm-hmm. Neville and Beckham down that right hand side was a joke. Oh. Oh, Overlapping. Well. Do you know what as well? Oh, Gary, Gary Neville had great delivery as well. I'd rather have played Phil Neville. Thought he was underrated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're, just in, you're just in there making jokes, bro. <laughs> All right, now we'll discuss that player comparison then a little bit more. I'll give you some ch- chance to formulate some opinions about your glasses on. And I think we've done we'll, that one. We'll have to find another one. No, we'll, that's what I'm trying to say. We'll pick, we'll pick a big one, a big, big one. One that's okay. really going to get your taste buds going. Lads, I've got to say, it's been a great pleasure. I will see you both on Tuesday. And I look forward to the, uh, catching up and getting, getting right amongst it. Thank you very much. See you soon. Thank <laughs> you.